What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Kara Corey here, registered dietitian, and I am so excited about today's video and to share with you what I found out about myself. So if you've clicked on this video, you've seen that I am going to share with you guys today my own personal DNA testing results. I've never had my DNA or genetics tested before and I've always wanted to. So I was super excited when Tell Me Jen reached out to me to collaborate with them and have my DNA tested. Jason got his tested as well and we got all our results back. And so I'm gonna share that information, some of it with you in this video today. So if you're interested to know more about how this looks and works and I'm gonna have a giveaway at the end, then stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe and hit that like button, please. Tell Me Jen is a DNA testing kit and where you guys can find it is right on Amazon. So it's very easy to access. You can head over to Amazon. The kit itself is $189. Very simple, you go to purchase it, you get the kit in the mail, and what you do is you register it on their website so that when they get your results in, it all like automatically uploads into your own personal login. You can go through and look at all your results. It's a very simple process, which is nice because I didn't want to have to spend a lot of time on this. So all you give is a saliva sample. You go ahead, put the saliva sample in there. They give you a pre-labeled, um, label to send everything back out in the mail in. So it's just like a quick one and done, ship it out in the mail, and then you just wait for your results. Before we jump into some of my results, I do wanna mention what's really cool about this is that it just gives you a better understanding about your own body and your potential health. Like it, it gives you genetic information, but it's not like you look at it and all of a sudden you're diagnosing yourself with multiple diseases. This is just a means for you to grasp kind of a better understanding about your body and how you may or may not respond to certain things and different characteristics about yourself. That's why I really did like the Tell Me Gen kit because their results are so super detailed. So it's not like you just get like a few sheets with no explanation of what anything means. Their website is super intellectual. Based on any results you're getting, you can click on it. You can look at your technical report that kind of breaks down the SNP. So what they do is they test the SNPs, which are basically single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are those common genetic variations that you may see associated with certain diseases. And as I said, just because you have a SNP, it doesn't mean it's the end all be all for you guys, right? Because you're not just genetics your genetics plus your lifestyle factors in the environment that we live in. So all of that combined is how our body responds to our genes. So again, just, I don't want you guys to be like panicked when you see stuff, but what's really cool is that it is so in depth. You can learn so much about yourself. You can learn so many different things. A uh, few of the different areas that we're gonna talk about are gonna be disease risk. So it goes through some of the d diseases you may be at risk for. It also goes through your inherited conditions that you may have inherited. It goes through drugs, which I thought was really cool and like how your body responds to different drugs. Now I'm not on any right now, but I'm sure as I get older, if I need something, I'm gonna have a better understanding of how my body works and responds to things. And I can actually provide this to a doctor if they're about to put be on, say, a blood, a blood pressure medication. I'm gonna have better information as to how my body responds, whether I'm more sensitive or not. It also looks at distinctive traits about you, which is really cool, because I kind of went into it like knowing what I expected to see, and then I got some of that validated, and then some stuff really surprised me. And then the last piece is ancestry. So a lot of really cool information and it's so much information. Like I said, I can't go into everything for you guys, but I'm gonna kind of like point out a few things that I found very interesting and how I'm gonna utilize it. And Jason's also gonna share with you guys a few things that he found out about his results as well. So I'm gonna be looking through my computer here because what's cool is you've got your own little portal essentially with all your results. Also, if there's something you don't wanna see, you can block it as well which, you know, I don't care. I'd rather just know everything, but if you are just someone that like you don't wanna know, you can block it and not see it. But you can also um, print it in a PDF format. I'm gonna send mine to my mom's so she can see what, what she passed down to me. 
So in terms of complex diseases, that was one of the things I was most interested and nervous to look at and it tests like over 115 different diseases. So I was nervous. I think this is something that can make people nervous. Um, but again, I don't think you should be nervous to do this. It's, it's really just informational based. And for me, the top of the list, they separate it out by high risk, then you have low risk, and then you have where you just fall like normal risk compared to the average American. So your risk status, um, again, is gonna be based on the average population and the, the data from that. So the top of the list for me was restless leg syndrome. Compared to the average population, I'm 14 times more likely to experience this syndrome. Now, if you're not sure what restless leg syndrome is, it's really cool. I can go ahead, I can click on it. It's gonna provide me more information about this syndrome. It's also gonna provide for me symptoms, prevention, the genetic role, and then it gives you the technical report, which is really cool for any of us science geeks. And again, that's where it shows you the actual SNP um, that was used and then it kind of gives you more information about how that gene dictates different things in your body to keep it very basic. I don't believe I have restless leg syndrome so that's the thing you guys like not saying I couldn't still uh, get that disease it's just informational I'm at much higher risk for that so it'll be interesting to see what happens in my future. Um, another one that tops the list is obesity which the average risk um, I'm 1.3 times the average risk. So I'm just like a little bit higher, but I would say the majority of us are probably at a fairly high risk of obesity. One of the things that made me nervous, but just to be mindful of is heart attack. Heart attack's on my list, and I'm three times more likely to experience a heart attack based on the average person, which heart attacks are one of the number one killers so i feel like that's very good for me to know right now as a female as someone who does put themselves under a lot of stress and pressure um that to me tells me my lifestyle factors are so much more important than ever you know um living a healthy lifestyle making sure my diet is is good is going to support having a healthy heart as well as stress management so that one for me is a little bit of an eye-opener doesn't matter how old you are, these are things we can be thinking about in terms of our lifestyle choices. So that was really interesting to look at, a lot more information there. In terms of inherited conditions, I actually didn't have any, so that was really cool to see. Um, drugs, great to have on hand. Again, I'm not on any prescription medication right now, so that's not as pertinent for me right now, but I think is good information for the average person. Now I wanna get into traits because I went into this being super curious about um, caffeine consumption, but I also didn't know what other traits they would actually look at. So it looks at some distinctive physical traits, um, things like your eye color, freckles, stature, stuff like that, and then also some other influence traits by your environment and lifestyle. Um, so just a few things to mention because we don't have time to go through it all, but um, caffeine consumption I was just interested in. This one says I've got, you know, the genes there to have an increased consumption, which is totally accurate if you guys follow me, like your girl likes her caffeine. Um, the other one that's really cool on here that I think would be great for you guys that I haven't seen this in many other um, genetic testing um, is the diet response. So the diet response is super individualized. You're gonna click on that and look at your technical report. And in a nutshell, my diet response shows based on the SNPs that I do better with not necessarily a lower fat diet, but if I lower my fat in my diet, it's going to show a reduction in BMI. However, that's not impacted by an increased consumption of monounsaturated fats. So I think that's great because I love monounsaturated fats and it's interesting to me because it does kind of confirm what I've learned works well for me in terms of dieting, losing weight, and feeling my best. It tends to be a diet that's not super high in fat. However, the fat that I am consuming comes from monounsaturated fats. So it's really cool that I can learn that information through this and have a better understanding about how my body processes fats. One of the other SNPs they looked at um, 
one of the results was a high fat diet is related to an increase in BMI. So all the SNPs they looked at for diet for me go back to a higher fat diet is going to lead to a higher BMI. And this may not be the case for everyone. This is why everyone is so individualized. Um, but I'm gonna have Jason step on and share his results too for the diet component because obviously being a dietitian and working with you guys, this is like the coolest stuff to me. Yes. Now I must say that Bruce hit me in the face earlier. So they were having WrestleMania 2019. Bruce won. So, so yes. So <laughs> that's what this is all about. A diet rich in monounsaturated fatty acids is associated with low BMI and obesity risk. Yay, avocados. And I hate avocado. But I do love your cookies that you made. Yeah, you don't like eat a lot of monounsaturated fats. I don't. I've always had a fairly lower fat diet. We know the Mediterranean diet is just a super healthy diet for most people. There's a lot of research to support that and that kind of backs up this, this type of information. Now yours is different, you said, right? Yeah. Typical maintenance of, of lost a, weight. Of lost weight. So it's where, easy for me when I'm like get lean, it's easy for me to stay lean. Where mine did not say that. Mine says um, difficulties to maintain the lost weight. So, but it does specify in young persons with obesity. So maybe not in my adult life. Maybe that, I don't know. So basically, I, I win that game. <laughs> yeah, he does. It's always got to be a competition. And the last, or no, there's a couple more. Shredded easy snips. <laughs> <laughs> the total fat decrease in the diet leads to a higher reduction in BMI, but an increase in the monounsaturated fat consumption does not change BMI, much mm -hmm. like you. Very much, yep. Typical odds of obesity following diets both high and low in saturated fat, which mm -hmm. is typically like you. Right. And the last one, a high fat diet, 30% calories from the fat, is related to an increased BMI. And I think probably think my calories are around 20% fat. 20% of your calories come from fat? That's I'd pretty say, low. I, I, I'd yeah. say that, um, which means could be why I'm... Why you maintain such a shredded physique? Yeah, because it's... I mean, let's be I'm, real. It's, gene pretty, it's genetics. Macronutrient-wise, I pretty much do around 30% of my total calories coming from fat. But I know from doing show competitions or just from doing a weight loss period, a cutting phase, the times that I see the most results or when things really start to change is with that reduction in fat. You know? Yes, when your fat gets low, low. Yeah, that's when you really see it occurring. So it's very interesting stuff to read and see validated. All right, I might be back. And so your results may be vastly different. They may say you do very well on a high fat diet. That might be when I would say, you know what, let's maybe try a ketogenic approach. Um, but for myself, my genes and what I've personally experienced are not showing me that that would be the way to go. But um, that would be one area to really look at to kind of validate what you're doing in terms of your diet. So the more information we can collect, the better to help folks live a healthier lifestyle. There's also good information under traits regarding muscle endurance, muscle recovery. And so I have this history of being a long distance runner, a marathon runner. However, that's kind of several years ago now. I haven't really done that consistently in a while, but my results actually showed me as being more prone to being a sprinter in terms of my muscle endurance. I have more of those fast twitch muscle fibers, which is just, again, really cool information to learn as an athlete, as someone who, you know, may decide to run and do races again. That's good information for me to have. Yes. My muscle which, endurance is also probably sprinter. Which makes sense because he will not run with me because he's like, you're running too slow and it makes it harder. <laughs> it does. And I've been so injured skateboarding over the years. I can't run at her pace. It screws Did up my body. Did you think I was going to be a sprinter? I didn't. I thought you were going to be long distance. Cause yeah, but you know what's kind of cool? Because it kind of reiterates to me. I was thinking back like when I really pushed myself to be able to qualify for the Boston Marathon. We were all about hit. I, my method of doing so was getting my sprints in short, fast bursts where I couldn't breathe. And that is really what impacted my endurance, my ability to qualify for the Boston Marathon. So that actually does make sense to me. What's your male pattern baldness? Mine's an increased risk. Uh, <laughs> do I sucks. have male? Do I have that listed? 
No, you oh, don't. Oh, okay. Uh, Menarch. Mine was right. My Menarch says slightly late, and I was pretty early. I think 11's kind of early to have that. Preference for sweets. Increased. Makes sense. This is definitely an accurate testing. Mine's typical, and I, I love you are typical. sweets. I love sweets. You're not the average sweets eater, That's though. true. You're really not. I'm good at controlling it. What's your, did you look What's at... your pain sensitivity? Mine's normal. I'd like to believe it's higher than normal. My pain sensitivity says increased. I feel like no. the best way as a woman to test that would probably be giving birth, and I've never gone through any pain, never giving birth. I've never had any surgeries. Like, the worst thing I've had happen is like a mole removed in my wisdom teeth, so. And I think because I've been hurt so much, I've kind of just like adapted to yeah. always being in pain. <laughs> what was really interesting for me is it says, um, for heroin addiction, I have like an increased risk. I'm normal. Which is weird to me because I, I never dabbled in any of that kind of stuff and I always was scared to do anything like that. Not that it was necessarily offered to me, but I just felt like I had that personality. Like I was scared if I tried something once, I'd be addicted to it. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that. Now this is interesting. I have no sense of smell and I think it's due to sinuses. So the sense of smell. Oh, yeah, the sense of olfaction. Uh, reduced Here. ability to detect. B eonoma, I don't know. Bionoma, normally detected as floral, floral aroma. aroma. Hmm. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, his olfactory nerves are just, it, it's very, it's not very common, but with real bad sinus infections as a kid, your olfactory nerves like crap the bed, for yeah. lack of a better so term. I can't so he can't smell, but um, that's kind of interesting that that's in there. Do you want to talk about our ancestry? Because I was pretty excited to see that. Um, not necessarily from a health perspective, but I think it's just really cool to see your ancestry because, you know, I always talk about being like a little Canadian girl because my, not that I grew up in Canada, but my dad grew up in Canada or, you know, was born there and a lot of my relatives are from Canada, but, you know, I want to see what other stuff I had going on and it looks like I am, your girl is 98.6% European. It's really cool because it goes through and shows you all the countries as well so that like half of that is West and South European population. The majority of me is got British ancestry, which I had no idea. 32.6%, 10% Italian, um, only 5% French, which is interesting, and then almost 5% Finland as well. And then I'm 0.7% African, you guys, and 0.4% South Asian, and I think I'm a pretty interesting little mix of stuff. You even have American in you. I have 0.3% American, so. So it's interesting because I only have European in me. Basically 75% West and South European, and then 25% Russian. So that's it. That's it. <laughs> and my family, on my mom's side is all Polish, and my dad's side's Irish. Yeah. So again, that's not that's even in here, and I was right. like, wow, that's crazy. Also, I want to mention on the website, it's nice because if you're kind of not sure what to do with this information, they do have some options on here for consultations if you want to do that, nutrition or medical, but what I would suggest is if you are working with a doctor, don't make any changes to any of your drugs, diet, things like that. Like Definitely if you're already working with a healthcare practitioner, talk with them before you know totally shifting over your life. But yeah, I thought this was super helpful for my own self in terms of just continuing to improve my health and figure out what's best for my own little body. Tell Me Gem was nice enough to offer to do a giveaway as well with this video, so I'm happy to announce that I get to give away two of these kits. Like I said, they're $189 on Amazon, so I'm gonna keep it super easy for you guys. All I want you to do is go ahead and leave a comment below saying that you're interested in the giveaway and make sure you are subscribed to the channel and that's all you need to do for the giveaway. What I'm gonna do is a week from today, I will head back over to the comment section and I will reply to two of your comments, letting you know who the winners were. So be sure to check your notifications if you guys are interested in winning the giveaway. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about me and I motivated you guys to learn a little bit more about your own genetic makeup. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one.